Good evening, everybody. It's Rabbi Kolakowski again. I had a very good question from our friend. Um, I don't remember the chapter and verse, but I remember it was something First Titus 4, maybe. Um, he describes how in the Christian Bible, in the Christian New Testament, uh, the book of Matthew, uh, Jesus says, let no man call you rabbi, and do not call anyone your father, because you have only one master and one father in heaven. And based on that, many denominations have a custom to not use titles uh, for their leaders. Uh, this is particularly true for the, <coughs> excuse me, for the Jehovah's Witnesses, and there are some other uh, Christians who also will follow this. Some don't use any titles. Uh, the Quakers also don't have clergy officially, and some uh, specifically eschew the title rabbi and the title father, but we'll use other titles because those are the titles that Jesus singled out, although others will say, no, it applies to any title. And so for that reason, like I said, the Jehovah's Witnesses, they will not have anybody who called reverend or pastor or anything like that. Um, and generally, the a lot of people use the term brother, but again, of course, uh, you know, he said that as a follower of, of Jesus, that's why he doesn't do this, why he doesn't use this name. But the truth of the matter is, of course, the majority of Christians do refer to their clergy by some titles. The, you know, traditional churches, the old, you know, high churches, the the Roman Catholic Church, the Eastern Orthodox Churches, and the Anglican Communion, communion um, will call their priests, their, their clergy priests, they will call them Father, um, and, then, and they have a whole hierarchy of a deacon, and then a priest, and then, uh, you know, a, a monsignor, a bishop, and a Cardinal and, and then the Pope and, and the, you know and then the and they have monks and they have nuns and and in the Orthodox Church you have a patriarch or a metropolitan and all of these things um, you know primate archdeacon all kinds of different titles that you'll find in these Christian communities. So, uh, and there's, you know, a certain level of chauvinism to say, you know, as a follower of Jesus, we don't use this one. Obviously, there are many followers of Jesus who do use titles. It's not that they never saw that verse, so how do they understand it? But that really wasn't the question here. And again, I don't, again, I, I can't think of a better word in English than the Yiddish word, I don't forgin that your particular brand of Christianity takes that verse literally and therefore um, you know doesn't um, you know doesn't uh, call their clergy by any titles uh, it might not even have any clergy Although, obviously, you do find in the New Testament mention of bishops and apostles and all these things. So, so you know, that's... Uh, and, and what Christians call the New Testament. We, I'm Jewish. We don't have a New Testament. We only have one, you know, we, we only have our original... Uh, So, you know, how do we deal with this? Uh, and simply my answer is, you know, you follow your church. If that's the tradition of your church, 
you know, and even in your church, all right, you believe these other Christians are not Christians. I mean, uh, what, what, you know, what's not my business to tell you who's a Christian and who's not a Christian, you know. Uh, but obviously, all of these churches who do at least claim to be Christians, and, and as far as I'm concerned, they're Christians. It's not my business to define who's a Christian who's not a Christian because I'm not a Christian myself. But they obviously interpret this verse differently. Uh, I did a little bit of research on this today. and It doesn't say don't call any man rabbi. It says um, let no man call you rabbi. That's different than... And I saw someone point out that that's like saying, you know, it says thou shalt not steal. Does that mean if somebody steals from you, uh, you've committed a sin? No, it's the person who stole from you who committed the sin. The thief is the sin. So perhaps the person calling you rabbi uh, is uh, is doing something wrong, according to that verse, uh, but not the person being called rabbi. And, and it only says, "Let no man call you rabbi." But then it says, "You should call no man your father." So does that mean? that a Christian should not call your actual biological father who raised you, perhaps, father, dad? Is that what it means? Or is it obviously some deeper meaning of, you know, understand that we all have one father in heaven and, you know, it's not a legalistic understanding. It's funny how you know, so many Protestant Christians will, you know, speak out against legalism, but then they'll create a new legalism based on what the New Testament says, what the Christian, what the books that Christians call the New Testament says. Um, and I'm not here to answer the question for for all of these different churches why. You know why they do use these titles and so forth. Um, and I saw someone was trying to explain that you know it's not saying not to use those titles, but not to elevate any human being to the level of being like God. Um, well, I. We can, we can move on from there. We don't have to elaborate on that. Um, and I don't mean to be disrespectful. I'm just... Uh, just saying. So, but uh, our friend here, uh, who's in his name, uh, his screen name cites a verse in the book of Titus, he says that um, you know he was asking me as a Jewish person I'm not a Christian I'm not a follower of Jesus but as a Jewish person why do I feel comfortable calling a non-Jewish clergy person by their religious title And, and so, why do I mention, why do I call him Bishop Fulton Sheen instead of just Fulton Sheen in the, in the video he was commenting on where I quoted uh, Fulton Sheen? I mean, uh, the answer that I have is, first of all, I just like to be polite. And I have no reason not to be polite. And if someone has a title, I respect them by their title, just like they respect me and call me rabbi. And just as much I respect people who have a sincere religious belief that they take that verse literally. And so we have a, a volunteer who comes to prison every week who's from the Jehovah's Witnesses. 
and he calls me Joe and I call him George. I don't even call him Mr. So-and-so. He's just George. I don't need to say what his last name is. So he's George and I'm Joe when we're talking. And, and somebody else who works, uh, you know, who has a religious title, who's a deacon, he's Matt. So I'm Joe and he's Matt and he's George. And that's how we talk when, when George is around. And I guess, you know, the Imam is Ramazan. And we're all just, uh, we, that's how we um, conduct ourselves when George is around. But otherwise, the Imam is Imam, and the pastor is pastor, and the deacon is deacon, father is father. And the chief, the Indian chief, is the Native American chief. He doesn't mind being called the Indian chief. He's the chief. Sometimes we call him Chuck, but sometimes we call the deacon Matt. So, you know, but we treat each other with respect. Uh, and the doctor is doctor, and captain is captain, and lieutenant is lieutenant, and, and the deputy is the deputy. And we say sir and ma'am, because we're professionals. That's how we conduct ourselves. Uh, now, I don't know Bishop Fulton Sheen. He died before I was born. But people know him as Bishop Fulton Sheen. He had this title. He was, he was a bishop in Rochester, New York. He also had a, a title as the bishop of... Uh, I don't remember where it was. Somewhere in England where he, you know, he didn't live. But like he was given a, an honorary title. Much how... The Hasidic Rabbonim will have a title of a chief rabbi or grand rabbi of some town in Europe or somewhere else, uh, even if they're no longer there. You know, I think in the whole world we have one one rebbe, one Admor, who actually lives in his in his uh, city where he has a, the title as, as the Boston Rebbe from Boston. There's a Boston Rebbe from Harnoff and a Boston Rebbe from Borough Park and a Boston Rebbe in Beit Shemesh. There's a few Boston Rebbes. But we have, there's a Boston Rebbe in Boston. You know. And, you know, when I spoke to different Rabbonim and Rebbes and I wanted to honor my ancestor, the Chavos Yoyer, and so I, they call me the Rav of Koblenz, even though I've never been to Koblenz, I've never been to Germany. But uh, it's a nice name, I, you know. As the Biala Rebbe told me, he says, "Shine the and Koblenz, Ki Falus Bais Lamed, Ayn Nin Sadek of Shine So, um, you know, and, and, and again, I have no reason to be disrespectful to someone. Just like, again, when I'm. When, you know, and and the Ritzayin Shaladim is a kvoidai. It says in the in the Sefer Chasidim from Rabbi Yehuda the Pi, Rabbi Judah the Pious, Rabbi Yehuda Chosid. He writes that uh, you know we um, what do you call it? person is, that's how you honor him. And so if George wants to be called George, I'm going to call him George. And if, uh, and, you know, I don't think the deacon cares whether or not I call him deacon, but the, that's that's his title. Why shouldn't I call him deacon? Why shouldn't I call the deputy deputy? And why should I call the captain the captain, the lieutenant the lieutenant, and the superintendent superintendent? And uh, though sometimes they just call him soup, you know. And that's, uh, and, and everyone's Mr. So-and-so, Mrs. So-and-so, Ms. So-and-so. Treat people with respect, you know, just like, um, I mean, you know, there's all this brouhaha about what kind of pronouns to use for somebody, and I think it's silly personally, but when I'm dealing with someone and I, and I have people who I'm friendly with, have preferred pronouns that are different than I would 
use, but I always use their preferred pronouns to, because I want to respect them. You know, and, I, and it's not my business to make some kind of statement. I'm not using your pronouns that you want to be used, even if I think it's silly. Because we, have, we, we live in a polite society and we have to treat people with respect. And uh, a person's will is that's how you honor them, that's how you show them respect by doing what they want. You know, you know there's a certain, uh, it doesn't, that's not a blanket statement for anything. You know, uh, someone you, you, he wants you to feed him pork and he's Jewish, I can't do that. You know, and you want, uh, you know, he wants me to do something. I can't do everything, but if it's something I can do, even if I'm uncomfortable with it and it's out of my comfort zone, and it perhaps even to a certain extent goes against my beliefs, it's still proper to be respectful to people from a religious standpoint. And I think a bigger problem in my community, a bigger sin, quote unquote, then for me to call someone who is a bishop, bishop, and if it's, you know, traditional and, and proper etiquette to, when you write to him, say the most esteemed and this and that, which I've done, I've written letters to bishops and I, and I write to the most esteemed or whatever, I don't know, I look up on Google what you're supposed to write and I, and I show respect to us, and to me as an Orthodox rabbi, it's much more problematic for me to call a reform rabbi rabbi because their beliefs are so radically different that we don't recognize them to be rabbis and yet still I always call a reform rabbi rabbi. If that's a sin, all right, so I, I have to fast for something on Yom Kippur. I have a lot of worse sins. That should be the worst sin I should do is call a reform rabbi rabbi. But the truth of the matter is the English word rabbi it was common for many of the Gedoli Israel, many of the, the great leaders of the ultra-Orthodox community, Jewish community, to refer to, even meaning when they're writing something in, in Hebrew, in the Holy Tongue, they will uh, not refer to Reform rabbis as Rabbanim, as Rabbonim, they won't say harav, this and that. But they'll write, like in Yiddish, rabbi. Reish, aleph, beis, aleph, yud, or reish, aleph, beis, yud, yud. Rabbi. Or probably pronounced rabbi, but, uh, you know, I know uh, Rabbi Nachman Breslover said, you know, there'll be a point where the rabbonim will be rabbonim with an eye and they'll be bad little kids and that may be one of those rab on him. And so, <laughs> although he also said Rabbi is, is Rosh B'nai Israel, but it's also Rabbi Nei Hashem. And so you have to, you have to know which one you are and uh, maybe <laughs> it might be a little bit of both. In your own eyes, maybe you should be Rabbi Nei Hashem and I know I am. And, but maybe other people should respect you, Rosh B'nai Yisrael. And I don't mean, uh, I'm not talking about me. You know, won't anybody who considers me to be a rabbi, I'm not talking about that, but I'm just saying in general, you know, in a professional standing, you know, when I'm, you know, when, I, when I'm doing what I do at work, and people call me rabbi, so why shouldn't I show them the same respect, you know? Even in shul, not everybody calls me rabbi. People call me, you know, Yitzchak Zev, or Rabbi Yitzchak Zev, but, you know. And, uh, you know, at the... the, the our secular Jewish neighbors or, or less observant Jewish neighbors do usually call me Rabbi Joe. Uh, again, like I said, it's if I can call a Reform Rabbi Rabbi, which I do, and I have no 
problem with doing. <clears throat> I can call uh, Bishop Fulton Sheen, Bishop Fulton Sheen, and even call Bishop, uh, what's it, uh, what did we watch at, at, at work last week? T.D. Jakes, Bishop T.D. Jakes. He can also be a bishop. I don't have no respecter of, of churches. They're all the same. I don't want, you know, if, if, if T.D. Jakes is Bishop T.D. Jakes, that's fine with me. I think um, uh, Mitt Romney is also a bishop. In the, in, I mean, the Mormon church means something a little different, but I think he's the bishop of his ward, which is, a, you, know, you know, pretty prominent there in the, in the Mormon church, and, and they use those titles. But, you know, it's just, uh, but the thing is, I don't think outside of the church setting, they don't usually, you know, I've never seen a, a, anybody refer to um, Mitt Romney as Bishop Mitt Romney, uh, because that's just not what's traditional in their church, you know, meaning uh, in a secular, you know, standing to call Mitt Romney Bishop Romney. He's, he's Senator Romney right now. He's Senator now. He was Governor Romney. You know. Like I said, if, if Judge Roy Moore, he's not a judge anymore, but if he became a Senator, he'd probably be Senator Judge Roy Moore. Because everybody always called him Judge Roy Moore. Right? So, uh... And, you know, he doesn't hate Jews because his, uh, his lawyer is a Jew, right? He's got one of those Jew lawyers, Judge Roy Moore, so, you know, you can't call him an anti-Semite. I don't believe he's an anti-Semite. I think he's a little off, but he's, uh, he, he's fighting a good fight for the Ten Commandments. That's a good thing. You know, I, uh... But alas, we, we weren't worthy to have Senator Judge Roy Moore. Um, I, I went to school, you know, because in the Jewish community we have people given le legal names, and they're also given Hebrew names. Sometimes it's the same, and sometimes it's different. Like my Hebrew name is Yitzchak Zev, and my English name is Joseph Michael. But I went to I went to yeshiva with this one kid who his English name was, his Hebrew name was Yitzchak and his English name was Doctor. That was his first name. That's what his parents named him, Doctor. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's, and I think actually he became a doctor, so he's Doctor Doctor. Um, you know, it's like, uh, like Seinfeld's joke about, you know, if you're naming somebody Jeeves, pretty much, you know, limiting what they are going to do for a living, you know? They pretty much have to be a butler if you're going to name them Jeeves. And if, and if you're going to name them Mr. Belvedere, pretty much the same. Uh, there it is again, the title, Mr. Belvedere. Uh, and and the same thing, you know. By by that logic, it would it would also be prohibited to call someone doc, uh, doctor. And the thing is, the answer that I have with all these things, and I was discussing this with a deacon today after I saw your question. You know, I and I've said this many times before. I mean, each denomination they have to follow the traditions of their denomination. And even if you're calling yourself non-denominational, it's still it's still a denomination. Um, but I meaning whoever you're learning, somebody's teaching you the Bible, and you're learning, you know, the interpretation of the Bible based on whatever you're being taught. 
So I, I remember a number of years ago when I was the rub in Richmond, we, there was a PBS special that was being filmed there, and I was there in the audience, and uh, among the people who were there was um, oh, the famous, uh, he passed away from prison ministry founder uh, Chuck Colburn was there, I met him. Wasn't very friendly. I was hoping he'd be a little bit more friendly, but I can understand. He's an old guy. And he had a difficult life. There was this really arrogant, horrible atheist uh, professor of of Bible studies of Jewish ancestry. He called himself a Jewish atheist, which is kind of sickening. But he um, he he. They, everybody gave out their books, so I read his book. And in the book, he said that him and a few other um, Bible professors, you know, I think it was some, maybe George Washington University, somewhere in, in Washington, D.C. area, he's a professor, and they all went out drinking, and they were discussing, you know, what what is the Bible's opinion on all these different controversial questions? You know, what does the Bible say about abortion and this and that and what that, you know? And the old, the oldest of them, you know, out of a drunken stupor, said, "The Bible doesn't have an opinion on anything. The Bible is pure energy, and the opinions come from how you interpret it. Uh, you know, all the different um, all the different churches have and, and synagogues. And we're all reading the same books." And we're all interpreting it differently. And that's why you need somebody to teach you. You know, that's why you need some kind of a tradition. So you can... Uh, so you, you have what to follow. Otherwise, you know, so I'm not telling you you shouldn't... You should start calling people by titles. You can call me Joe. It's fine. Um, you don't have to call me Rabbi because I respect your religious beliefs. Um, but, you know... But this is how I do, you know, and I have no problem. I respect your religious belief, even if I don't think that's what was really intended there. It's none of my business. I'm not a Christian. I don't have any business to tell you how to interpret the New Testament. That's for your Bible teachers to teach you. Um, and so that's how you got to do it. And so do do your thing. But again, don't don't look down on the Catholics and everybody else, really just about everybody else who does something different. You do your thing, they do their thing. Shalom al Israel, we say, right? All right. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. Comment. Thank you.